So I've got a thing I want to rant about. Um, do you know you know who Tim Misney is, right? Yes. <laughs> See his right? stupid face everywhere. Dude, dude, dude. I gotta talk about this dude's billboards. His recent billboards. <laughs> They're fucking insane to me. They're absolutely insane. So if this makes it into a bonus or an opening for anybody who does not live in Ohio, there is this ambulance chaser extraordinaire uh, um, lawyer named Tim Misney. Dude's bald, old, bald, white guy. With, like, With really heavy size. eyebrows, and he can do the rock one eyebrow up thing. And then he's always in, like, a pinstripe or a gold suit. Always. And so, like, but he's been around forever. Like, you used to watch, see his ads on, like, the, 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 the WBNX 55 when you'd watch the afternoon cartoon shows back when TV existed. Um, but <laughs> he's purchased this set of billboards that I keep coming across that I, I can't not talk about anymore. First one I saw, it's between Akron and uh, 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 here, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, like on eight. And it's just this big sign, and it's him in his gold suit, white background. So just him, just a, just a bust shot. So like just like chest up from him. He's got the eyebrow raised, the intense look in his face, white background. The only thing it says is, you know the name, <laughs> which is insane to me. Right off the bat, that starts insane because there are two types of people, Tim, uh, people who do know your name or people who do not know your name, and this billboard helps none of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, nobody does it help whatsoever. We already knew your name who did, and the people who don't definitely don't know how to reach you. They don't know what you do. They have no clues. They have nothing. Uh, you, you honestly look like a mob hitman. So maybe that's what you're trying to advertise here. I don't know. So then the second, the second one I see is even crazier because it's a close-up. It's still the white background, but instead of the bust, it's just his fucking eyes. Yes, There's no writing. The There's no the nothing. I've seen. It's just his fucking eyes. I'm like, you know, what? Like, what kind of, If could you imagine not knowing who this man is and driving through Northeast Ohio or South Southern Ohio, where you are, and like, just driving through and like looking up and seeing a giant billboard of a man's crazy ass eyes staring at you? That's insane. That's, that's, sociopath level yeah. of like advertising so then i found a third one which is the most confusing not the funniest i feel like the first two are the funniest the third one's the most confusing because it's the same thing white background bust shot not the eyes bust shot then he's got a motorcycle helmet on with just his eyes showing and all it says is look twice <laughs> So, like, the third one, so, like, he's walking into the guy to get his sales, and he's just like, bus shot up, just my face, you know the name. You don't want to put a, you don't want to, you don't want to put your name in there anywhere? No, if they don't know my name, fuck them. You know these billboards cost, like, cost, like, hundreds of dollars a month. Doesn't matter. They know my name. Yeah, but then why are you getting the billboard? You're fired. Give me in here. Who will give me somebody else? <laughs> second shot. Second shot. Just my eyes. Don't write anything on it. Just my eyes. Just your eyes. Just your eyes. Yeah. Third shot. I got a soft spot for motorcycle people. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna put this motorcycle helmet on. And you're gonna take a picture of me with the suit and the motorcycle helmet on. And then put look twice. So that motorcycle people like it, it, it's insane. It is insane. They're insane billboards. Yeah, uh, the one with just the forehead, I believe I saw when we were on our way, uh, we went to a Day to Remember concert up in Cleveland on the Oh, uh, there it is, yeah. Um, and it was kind of over by uh, Independence where the uh, Top Golf is. Yeah, okay. Over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, it really is, it's just... Yeah, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> it's like his eyes like straight up in the air, like, I, it, it's, it's seriously, like, every time I see this, I'm like, oh my god. Tim Misney knows I sinned. Like, is that what he was? Is that what he was going for? Like, what kind of like absolute psychopath level like like person do you have to be to spend that much money on billboards that accomplish nothing? 
absolutely nothing. Uh, they they're they're starting to make their way over this way too. Um, I believe the, it. the the one the one that I saw it was kind of like that. It was uh, it was just it didn't even say like you know the name. It says you know what I do, and it's him like pointing. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We don't, kid. Well, if we do, we get it. But like, you're not spending the money for us. Like, what are you doing? That's the wild shit. It's like the people who know right. who you are, right. and know what you do, don't need the advertising. <laughs> the to advertising about your services. They right. already know. <laughs> right. Like, you don't even say you're a lawyer in the ads. So, like, no. so like, if if you at least said you were a lawyer somewhere up there. Like, somebody driving through could see the billboard, get pulled over, and be like, hey, I want the guy on the billboard who's a lawyer. You know? You don't even say that! You wouldn't even know to ask for eyebrows, man, if you, if you, were, if you saw those billboards. I, nobody who saw those billboards would know that that's Tim Minsney and what his job is. It's, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. So, on another note... Uh, I'm glad you've seen them because they're just fucking insane. Like me and my wife look out for them now. The motorcycle one just blew my mind because it was just like, what? Like that to me, like completed the picture of the photo shoot. Like then he just randomly puts a motorcycle helmet on. <laughs> it's like, could you imagine the photographer? Like, what is happen? What is happening here? What's probably even better too is bro probably doesn't even have a motorcycle. <laughs> like, it's right. Just like a, another pandering shot to mm -hmm. like whoever, <laughs> whoever. I right. want to get this demographic. Right. But you're not even getting what demographic? They don't know who you are. <laughs> um. Okay. All right. Time to get your fix. It's a horrible gaming podcast. It's not good. It's not great. Horrible gaming podcast. It's not even what you would call fair. It's really not that good. Horrible gaming podcast. Hello, my name is Zach Rye with Old Man Gaming. You, dear listener, for whatever reason, have decided to listen to another horrible gaming podcast. With me, since I am not alone and usually never alone, is Neil, aka Tiny Wizard. Oh, I like the I like the hair whip. It was like the anime hair whip. Whoa. <laughs> I used to have hair that I could do that with, <laughs> and I still occasionally I'll notice it sits weird, and I'll oh. do what I used to do. Oh, a little flick. Like back up the goth over. flick. <laughs> well, it's it's wild now because, you know, I'm, at, I'm an adult and can't get away with that. Um, <laughs> I think my hair starts doing different things now as I've gotten older, so I just have to change my hairstyle, you know, because. That sounds right. That sounds right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a show for you today. Um, that show is going to be a nice, relaxed show. We're just going to kind of hang out, talk about the games we've been playing. Uh, Neil has had a really hard day at work. I've had a hard day doing nothing. Um, we, we, uh, uh, we also are a little blown out with all the news that we've had to deal with yeah. lately. So I, it's been a slow news week for the first time ever. I think we're just going to gab a little bit, talk about what we're playing, have a little fun. Um, but before we do that, we got to thank the people who make this show possible. Behind our ugly mugs, you're seeing a fancy graphic that was provided by Mr. Mark Bell. We thank him for that. And then, of course, the theme song for this show and all of the shows here is provided by the man who makes the music, my brother Nick Van Siders. We thank him for that. Now, we're going to take a quick break, then we're going to head to Fanterraction, read out your comments, and talk about them. We'll be right back with that. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to our first segment, our most important segment. That's Fan Traction. That's where we, the co-hosts, we talk to you guys, the fans. We shout out your words. We talk to them. We riff on them. We don't get... We're not huge. So the thing we can provide to you is interaction. You're welcome. So, uh, for what it's worth. For what it's worth. So well, let's get right into it. Uh, starting off, we've got William Holwyn. 
Hi! Exclamation point. Commenting on the release day of the podcast. Hooray! Hello Kitty Adventure Island did come out first on Apple Arcade. Tried it for a bit. Was alright, but maybe not for me. Laugh out loud. And I haven't much to say. <laughs> then the laughing face. Thanks for the show. Hashtag Blue Box. Blue Box? Is that a reference I'm not picking up? Blue Box? Blue Box? Blue Box? Hashtag Blue Box? Uh, the fuck am I missing? I'm missing something. My brain isn't here today, Will. It, it's it's floating around. I've been trying I mean, to catch it. My brain is here, and I can't uh, come up with. So, uh, yeah, not sure. Yeah, I don't know what the hashtag means, but thank you for commenting, sir. Uh, continuing. Jason. It would be cool if they made a Princess Zelda game where she utilized all her egos, her alter egos. There's at least Sheik... And Tetra, Tetra from Wind Waker. Uh, mm, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would love that. You could almost do like a dimension. Uh, like, like a, a multiverse d- thing. Yeah, like a multiverse thing where it's all the Zeldas. Almost like a Four Swords thing. Like you could yeah. you could bring in all the different Zeldas. That'd be fucking sweet. I'd get down with that. I'd get down with that. Um, on, Nintendo, you can have that one. Come on, we need a Sheik game. Sheik's awesome, man. Like, I'd love Sheik. Like, I don't understand. I... I I decided to put it in, obviously, my rant about Zelda, uh, or this comment wouldn't be made. Um, And yeah, again, I think what they did was really cool. I just wish that we had more options there. You know what I mean? Yeah, Um, no, absolutely. Uh, Yeah, it's it's one of those things to where we wanted it for a while, and honestly, we thought we were going to get with Tears of the Kingdom. I feel like that would have been great, but I, I, I just feel like Nintendo is doing that, uh, doing that thing that they like to do to where they test the waters to yeah. see the reception before they go in to do the big thing first. I mean, look, love or hate woke, woke culture or any of that, it has led to us getting a lot more like positive out, positive, um, I don't know, like positive, uh, uh, Oh man, I cannot think of words today. Uh, uh, like it, it's like it, it, people want to see women in lead roles much more now than you know what I mean. Like that's a it's a thing we want to see as an audience. Uh, I think this is the right time for Zelda to be in the thing. I want to say this though. I, look, I don't know what this makes me, but nobody chooses to go questing in a giant pink ball gown you just don't do that (laughs) like you don't go like i'm gonna go questing in the wilderness and fight monsters in this fucking evening gown shit you know like you just wouldn't do that you know Mm -hmm. um i don't even have anything against certs i'm just saying you can't like jump from pillar to pillar or like go through a swamp in that shit you know uh (laughs) so i i just i feel like they could have put a little bit more time into that aspect of it um, continuing, Jason then says, it was 92 in my bedroom the night before the storm. It was, it's 79 now, and I feel cold. <laughs> ew. Yeah, <laughs> ew. Weather got right, not fun. Oh, i tell you right now, uh, the weather's like doing some weird stuff. Mm-hmm. It feels like a crisp fall day right now. Yeah. You better believe I got all the windows open. It's funny uh, we got uh, we went to Condado for dinner, had some tacos, come home, and uh, we were watching TV. And a breeze, a cross breeze, came across. And I was like, ooh, that feels so good. And Kayla was like, oh, yeah, it feels real nice. It feels almost free. Because <laughs> <laughs> Lord funny. knows the past few days, the central yeah. air has run 24-7. Yeah, I get it, man. It's... It, same here. We've had that air running, and the what's crazy is it'll go from like like yesterday, it was hot as hell. It was super humid outside. It was disgusting. Then it rained, and I thought it was gonna get cool. It didn't. It just made it more humid. And then today, I had to put my flannel on. Like I got flannel on because it got so chilly. And we're in the house. Like, should we turn the air off? But I'm like. I want to turn the air off because tomorrow it's going to be a thousand degrees again, and then we're going to have to just try. Like it'll start, it'll have to pump to get it back to where it was. Yeah, you know. So like, I don't want to do that. That's the one thing about cutting your air up. Mm-hmm. A little HVAC talk here, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, whenever you turn the temperature up, 
you know, it's fine, but eventually you got to get it back down. Yep. And depending on what the weather is going to be like, you got to be strategic with that or else you're just going to be running your air 24 seven to get it back down to where you want it, which could cost more than just mm -hmm. leaving it at the lower temperature and it yep. maintaining at night. We, uh, we had one air conditioner breakdown on us back at the condo. We had this guy come to fix it. Um, his name is Reggie. I wish I could remember his business name. I'd shout it out. He's come multiple times to help fix us, fix stuff for us. Um, but he, you know, he was talking about the air conditioning and he was just like, you know, honestly, people think, oh, I'll give the air conditioning break and, and, and open up. He's like, the best thing for your air conditioner is set the temperature you like it at and just leave it locked as long as you can. Like, because once the air conditioner sets it at that spot, it doesn't have to work as hard to get back to that spot over and over again. Uh, so the minute you open up, it just changes everything. I found that very interesting. But uh, continuing, Jason Still. I saw a video recommendation the other day whose title said basically that everyone who badmouthed Redfall didn't actually play the game. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was too busy watching something else to look at it, uh, and I can't find it now, and I'm sad because I wanted to laugh at it. Yeah, uh, well, Jason, I know you played, but me and Neil and Kayla, there is a record of us playing through the game from start to finish, and it was pretty fucking terrible. Pretty fucking terrible. I don't know. It, it, was, it was objectively bad, but I loved the jank. That, it's that Sonic 06 entry. Yeah, yeah, there was it, it definitely made for great moments In, like, content uh, That being said I think we can all agree that it was Worse on my end for the jank And you guys can see it Because I'm the one, I, you, my screen is the one That's recording and there's just so many shutter Steps and glitches Um Jason then continues One of the things I think is interesting about Sea of Thieves Is that they run events that change things there was a hunter's call uh, call representative named Merrick who had an event uh, where he tried to do something but died. Golden Sands Outpost was built up into a fortified outpost renamed Port Merrick. And Merrick's ghost features in stories now. The Reaper's hideout started as a simple uncharted island. Then events featuring the masked stranger led him to build the Reaper's hideout on the island and added to the map. Also, Merrick's ship was sunk in the reef by the Reaper's hideout, and its wreck was added there. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. I mean, that's not the first Games of Service to do it, but if it's a good Games of Service, they do shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta do shit like that. Um, I think that's really cool. Uh, Jason, can you, I think it's all Jason. From here on out, Pirates of the Caribbean Tall Tales rewards some coral themed ship parts, and they are very pink and purple and bright. Uh, so I made a ship called the Kraken's Puke that I troll people with. Mostly, I just sail to ships, sail to ships, and play music at them. And if they sink me, I just come back over and over and ram their ship before they sink me. Uh, one time after, like, the sixth time they didn't sink me, the captain cannoned to my ship. He, we played music together for a few minutes, then he invited me to join his guild. It was so funny. So I dedicated the Kraken's Puke to the guild and made a brig called the Plague Heart, a uh, Plague Heart, with a dark red hull and a sea of decay, uh, and the sea of decay snails, and decided to and dedicated it to the guild too. I've not interacted at all with the guild since, since, but my trolling them gives, uh, but my trolling gives them reputation now. Um, he continues. Uh, one time I got into a Discord Reaper crew. Uh, we were on a galleon, but only three people. We came up on a solo sloop and sunk it while he wasn't paying attention. He, uh, we ended up recruiting him as our fourth. <laughs> A uh, lot of Sea of Thieves. He's very into Sea of Thieves right now. Uh, there's seven outposts in Sea of Thieves, plus the Reaper's hideout. I hate outpost campers. Fortunately, they seem to be non-existent now. That's awesome. Uh, it's been a long time since I've played. So. Uh, all my outpost encounters these past few months have been from ships that pull up after we've been at the outpost 
and even those are rare. I think it's happened about five times total since I started playing a couple of months ago. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then finally he goes, there's a horror comedy movie about a psychic tire, Rubber. It's kind of infamous for being very bizarre. Uh, I've heard of Rubber. Uh, I think it's an Australian movie, actually. What the fuck? <laughs> it's real. I've heard of it. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys for commenting. I appreciate all those comments. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to go to our talking point, which is just us talking about what we're playing right now and what we're having fun with. Uh, and then I'm sure Neil has some news stories that he wants to inform us about. Some. And then, yeah, couple. that'll be the show. Just a nice, calm, hangout show. We'll be right back with the talking point. Horrible Gaming Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to our talking point. And again, you know, we've done a lot of news stories in the last couple of months, uh, last couple of weeks. We're a little newsed out. Uh, you guys have all seen all of the trailers and releases and whatnot, so we're both kind of tired today, so we just figured we'd hang out and talk about the games we're playing, you know, just riff on them. What are you playing, Neil? Uh, so I've gone through uh, the the full demo of the Aero GPX twice now. Yay! Um, I'm glad I pointed that one out to you. Yeah, everything that I've wanted or needed, it, <laughs> it, it plays so much like f0 it it is it is f0 like it you you don't need to call it anything else because how it looks how it feels uh of course the art style is a little bit different but everything is what you think it is i mean you got to do something to differentiate yourself and who knows like if f0 was made today what it would look like you know yeah, they do do a little bit of a different uh, a take on everything, so it it changes things just the tiniest bit. So if you're familiar with the games, um, you don't get the ability to boost until the second lap. Um, now you get that ability once you get over the strip uh, in the game that gives you shield. It's not just energy, it's health and shield. Mm. So it's a risk reward situation so what you can do is you can blast through your shield to use this boost if you want but the tiniest little bump can take you out mm. if you want it so you can burn through all of your shield which is kind of the same sort of thing as f0 um this is this kind of gears it more towards you driving aggressively um like one of my one of the things that I always end up doing when I play F Zero GX is right from the jump I try to take out I can usually get maybe two sometimes three ships right from the start knocked out. Um, you can still kind of do that with this, but this adds a little bit more strategy to it. So if you know that other people are going to be driving aggressively, then you can say, okay, well I'm coming up on the strip. Maybe I'll get some boost here. Maybe I won't. They also have added the a little bit more in the aero driving. So F Zero GX did not do a whole heck of a lot of when you went up off in the air and you're coming back down. You can steer a little bit, but nothing crazy. There's actually like air drafts in this now. Oh, nice! So if you play your cards right, you can actually fly up in the air or. If you have a faster ground game, you hit that and you can intentionally ground yourself down and just drive. Um, absolutely fantastic. It's going to be a day one purchase when it launches. <laughs> well, and, and that's what a good game should should do is build off of its successor. You know what I mean? As a successor, it should build, should take the foundation of what it was and like build off of it. And you got to wonder if like they had just devoted a team to making F-Zero, if that's, you know what I mean? Like... And as far as copy, this guy basically straight up said, like, I'm making F-Zero because they won't do it. You know what I yeah. mean? And, and that's, that's... Oh, sorry. I didn't want to no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You didn't... I was just going to say, that's the wild thing. Like, that's where we are now with games. Yeah. Um, people want the thing. Company mm -hmm. won't give them the thing. Fine. I'll do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, especially with, like, Kickstart and stuff like that. Where they yeah. could just, like, you know, they could just be like, hey... You want an F-Zero game? Help me make an F-Zero game, you know? Uh, and make, I, I, I find, personally, when you look at those, like, Kickstarter games, the ones that are most successful are spiritual successors to games 
we didn't get. You know, uh, Aiden Chronicle, third most, you know, uh, funded game ever. Uh, that's a spiritual successor to Sukiden. Uh, you've got uh, um, Ritual, uh, Ritual of the Night, which is, uh, oh, yeah. uh, you know, spiritual successor to Castlevania Sim Symphony of the Night. Yeah. Uh, and now you've got this. I think the, the most successful Kickstarters are the ones where they're like, they're not making this game. We're going to make this game. Help us make this game. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I have gone back to an older one. So this last paycheck. So I'm kind of in a weird place with games right now. Um, I'm trying to slow down my gaming purchases. Like I've already said on here even that like triple a really doesn't do it for me and i'm not planning on making any triple a pur purchases you know in the future in the near future you know mm -hmm. um but one of the things about that too is i kind of want to play the games that i already have like i feel like nowadays there's always something good coming out that like we sometimes we bounce and like Something is good, but I haven't had a chance to truly experience it because something else kind of ate the time on that, you know? Um, Age of Wonders 4 is, like, one of my, like, Experience of the Year nominations last year. Um, it's a 4X game um, and a really awesome 4X game. And uh, um, I, I played quite a bit of it, but then its lunch kind of got eaten by Baldur's Gate 3. You know, uh, and then I just didn't get a chance. I kept wanting to go back to it, and then never getting a chance to go back to it. Uh, and it started coming out with DLC. Well, it it just released its last DLC, Elder Realms, and uh, so I was like, "Fuck it! I'm just gonna drop the forty bucks. I'm gonna get all the DLCs, almost like a new game, and then I'm gonna go back to it and dive in." And I it, I couldn't be happier, with the exception of the fact that I'm gonna make a PSA right now. If you're getting mods before the DLCs are out, don't do it. Just don't do it on games. I'm not going to make that mistake again. No, no, no. It just, like, wrecked my games for when the DLCs came out. That being said, other than that and some issues with crashing because of that, um, it's so much fun. They added so much shit to that game. So much shit. There's, like, I want to say, like, 18 playable races now in that game that, like, you can create races out of. Um, there's, you can now play, you can play a dragon, like a dragon lord, which they already had that, but now you can also play eldritch sovereigns, which are like massive Cthulhu things, uh, that, that you can create to control your armies. Um, there's all these different realms that they added, different like cultures and, uh, the, like I said, and the playable races, they have an insect playable race now. They've got like these weird uh, dark elf type things, but even worse than that sort of things. Uh, they've got like werewolves and cat people and just everything that you could think of. Um, so much fun. I've just been really, really enjoying that. Yeah, I, I have to say uh, I've been fiending to go through a backloggy sort of uh, yeah. situation myself. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking actually about the uh, Steam, <laughs> the Steam Summer Sale, and I just can't help myself to just scary games. Steam's nasty, man, because they though. they make cheap games, and then you're like, oh, I'll spend three dollars, and then it's like, oh, yeah. now I've got to find the time to play that game, you know? Yeah, I, I've got a whole list. I have all that I have installed on the computer. I have them all in like this weird mini taskbar sort of lineup at the very mm -hmm. top of my screen, and I just keep adding icons. Yeah. Add an icons. <laughs> I, I feel it. I feel it, man. Yeah, um, it's true. It, well, and Game Pass yeah. hasn't been slouching either. They just put out um, Sandrock, uh, my time in Sandrock, which is a game I really want to try. And then uh, uh, that Sherwood Builders looks really interesting. Robin Hood Sherwood Builders looks really interesting to me too. But like, <laughs> like I have Sandrock downloaded. I intend on trying and maybe even doing a review, but it's one of those things where it's like, I just don't want to like stop playing the other thing, you know, to start the new thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Cause I know part of, part of the thing, like even last year, you know, we were kind of talking about last year when I did it, 
knowing full well I shouldn't buy Street Fighter VI because I was still going through Tears <laughs> right. of the Kingdom. I still haven't beat Tears of the Kingdom, very much intentionally. <laughs> um, but, you know, of course I went and bought Street Fighter VI, and even right now, granted I haven't played it yet, but uh, the Bison DLC is right. out now. So now, I, tomorrow at some point probably, I'm going to be jumping on and at least getting that and fooling around with that at some point too. Um, I will say, uh, you brought up Baldur's Gate. Um, we are, I, I have, I have for the first time gotten actively frustrated with the game. Oh, what's the, what's the happening? It, it was, it was a puzzle. It was one single solitary puzzle. Ooh. So, uh, right now we are in the end of act two, finally. Okay. So we're, we're progressing towards the actual end of the game now. Okay. Um, so uh, we did Big the thing. Big nasty fight. fight coming your way. Yeah, we did the first round of Thorm, uh, which, fun fact, uh, whenever we were doing it, I I think uh, we weren't supposed to be doing as well as we were because at first it was bad times. Um, I had my uh, <laughs> my Tav like one shotted by Bro. <laughs> like, I'm just like. I'm I'm sorry. You realize I'm a barbarian, right? And like you unshotted me. Okay, yeah. okay. Just want to make sure that that's correct. Um, so then I have Gale in the party, and I was in the back, just like spamming fireballs. And then the game was like, "Oh, wait a second, hold on." Uh, <laughs> uh, so it it moved on to the next phase. I guess that's mm-hmm. scripted. Yeah. Um, so we got down into the weird fleshy fleshy area, uh, which oh, is the no. only thing I can describe. That's about. the big nasty fight coming your way. Oof. Yes, I'm sure. Did not like fighting uh, him. But there is the weird emotion color mind puzzle thing. Now, did you do this? God, I don't think I did. So the conceit of the puzzle is I you have... This. You have this, like, machine that you link psionically to. Okay. And you're supposed to guide four different colored, like, aspects of a brain through these intersecting tracks to the other side to unlock a door. Now, the puzzle is just get it to the other side where it's supposed to go, because they all go in specific slots, but the lines can't cross. So I'm like, okay, decent enough. The problem is the puzzle was designed for console or not wasn't designed for console was designed for PC. Okay. For you to be able to freely click around stuff. Uh. There is no direction, guidance, anything on what you're supposed to do. The game keeps acting like you can just touch one of the things and then like, hey, you're interacting Uh. with it. Do what you need to do with it. It was about a half hour, 45 minutes of me like, what in the whole cake fuck is happening? (laughs) So then then I'm like, fine, fine. I hate doing this, but sometimes I'll do it depending on the situation. I Googled what the fuck to do. Yeah. Sometimes you get All of the results, all of the walkthroughs were, so just solve the puzzle. No, no, no. I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand what's happening here. It's not just just solve the puzzle. How the fuck do I attempt to solve the puzzle? It wasn't until I started screwing around and just thinking way outside the box that I finally found out how to do it. I had to enter turn-based mode and freely go around and then select the stuff. But it gets even worse. Because then you have to manipulate the camera to the specific points. But I don't know if it's like this on con- on PC, but on console, when you move that camera around, if there's a single solitary thing in the way when you're looking, it just like throws you through a wall into the next room. That's weird. I'm- so I play on controller, and I don't ever remember uh-huh. having that uh, uh, camera problem. So maybe that's a that's a that's a console camera problem but i play on controller be. so i would have had the same problems that you had yeah you would like, have like yeah. I have phil gets like he doesn't understand how i do it like i prefer it because i don't like to so, so like in those games you know my biggest gripe and it's always this way like your biggest gripe is a stupid gripe you know but it's mm-hmm. the thing that keeps you from doing it my biggest gripe on crpgs is when they don't use the controller, I have to keep clicking in the place where I want my party to move 
with the mouse. Mm-hmm. So I have to like move the cursor, click, and then they all move to that place. And then move the cursor and click, and then they all move to that place. And I move the cursor, click, uh, da, 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 and then I'm hanging myself like that. That's that's my problem. <laughs> it's like it's just so tedious, and like Phil prefers it that way. I'm gonna assume most CRPG people prefer it that way. I hate it. I want a controller because the controller allows me to just move my lead character with the analog stick, and that's what I want. I just want to move my guy around. Yeah. I don't want to have to like keep clicking on things. I want to just move the person uh, with the character. And like, um, yeah, like I <laughs> that that just drives me nuts. So I play with the controller. I haven't had the camera issues. Just speaking of, or at least. Maybe I have, and they weren't as noticeable to me at the time, you know. But but they don't ring a bell. As far as that, uh, <laughs> that game still amazes me. How much stuff like somebody will come up and be like, "Oh, this part," and I'm like, "I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. I don't know how I missed it. I don't know how I even, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. it's it's kind of cool. And like I've gone through it like ten times, and I actually uh. At some point in the future, we're going to be putting out a show where me and Jeremy play Baldur's Gate 3 together because we got so far ahead in GM mode that we're like, like we've recorded episodes through September for that now. Oh, and Jesus. I, I was like, we need to stop. Like, I know that we like to play this, but like at some point we're going to become dated on like our references to the, you know what I mean? Like we're going to be, yeah. we're going to become outdated. Um, and he was like, okay. I, I was like, we're still making jokes about WrestleMania in our show because just when we recorded it, WrestleMania had just happened. WrestleMania was like fucking four months ago. You know? So like, like, like we need to chill. So we were trying to find something to do in place of it. And I was like, you know, we could just play that on split screen. And you've never played it. He had never played it. So we play that together. Oh. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Um is a different experience for the two of us because it's just different than playing the OMG together. But there were things that I immediately got that I had never experienced with Gale because I hate Gale. I send Gale out of my party as soon as I can. I don't want him to have my magic items and I don't want to <laughs> deal with his baggage. Back fiend. Is that like there's just some about his back his baggage that I'm like, nope, out of here. So like I tossed him in my main game, and I don't. And every other game, I've just like walked around that portal and just like never, <laughs> never yeah, gone anywhere in it. Yeah. So like, which is funny because, like, Phil hates Asterian, right? So like, mm-hmm. like he always ends up killing him or scaring him off or whatever th- through the game. There's a whole aspect of that game he's going to miss. Just like I'm missing the Gale, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so like Drone was like, "Well, let's let's keep him around." I was like, "Okay." So he died. This was the first time I had ever seen the whole like magic projection coming to you to tell you to not Did you ever get that? Uh, yes. Which was awesome. I was laughing my ass off. Going, Never seen it. And then it. going through the whole convoluted yes. thing yeah. to bring him that, back. Yes. Then the thing is going to be summoned, and you will have to say this to him, and like just yes. do the whole thing. Um, and I was like, I've got to, I've got to scroll, man. I'm just, just scroll you up. I'm gonna scroll you up. Please stop talking. It was so funny. Um, but I've never experienced it. You didn't go just, through the process. You just gave him a, a scroll of revivify. Yeah, we just revivified him. We're like, <laughs> shut up, Gail. Like we just kept telling him, shut up. Revivify then. What? You can hold on. You don't have to burn a revivify then. You can just Fuck go that. jump through his dumb hoops. <laughs> now, granted, I think uh, I think you only have to do it once in that process, and then right. from there, it's like. Uh, Hey, just follow the process thing, but yeah. I haven't lost Gale since that. So, yeah, that one time, and it was just so funny. I was laughing my ass off, but it, it's funny because that's another thing that I've never experienced. And like every time I go in, I'm like, I'm gonna try and play with these characters that I've never played mm. with before. And like, I, I, one of the nice things about that game, you just get something different every time, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, but that, that the puzzle that's where we were we digressed so oh, far oh yeah from the it. puzzle yeah <laughs> the pu- I can see how the puzzle would be frustrating honestly I don't even remember that many puzzles uh, in the game I think there was there was one puzzle in like the underdark that pissed me off and I didn't even get it I know I didn't get it I did everything wrong and then I just ended up killing everything at the end 
And I was like, well, don't know what that was supposed to be. <laughs> and it just moved on. It was, the the one, it was the one with the automatons. I don't know if you ever found that one. Um, no. There's like a wizard's tower in the Underdark that you have to go to. Oh, we tried. We we actually we went in there and we tried to do something with that, but we couldn't get through. Like We were like doing everything because if you like get within their range, they'll just start blasting you constantly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like doing shit like, oh, okay, those. so. So those you have to turn base mode them. You turn base mode them, and then there was something you could do to them to, like, turn them off. And I would just, like, turn base run to one, do it. Turn base run to another, do it. Turn base run to another, do it. Then turn turn base mode off, and everybody would run through before they reactivated, basically. Yeah, that, that Wizard's Tower was the only thing that, the only, like, puzzle that we came across that we didn't actually like solve. Well, no, I lied. There's the other one was the uh, going in to do the crash, the thing with the crash, uh, where the Gith Yankee are. I don't um, know that. I have never been there. So <laughs> I've still never been there. I so have long, yeah. circled around yeah. the edge of it, but I've never actually been to it. Long story short, uh, you can like go in through the front and do the whole thing with the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, or there's actually like a secret underground back entrance, which we stumbled upon. We didn't right. even like actively like look up a guide or anything for. I you love go that. Through, that happens you, so much in Baldur's Gate. Oh, yeah. You, you go through that, and then there's this crazy like light puzzle thing. I believe I've told this story before, actually. Um, this crazy light puzzle thing to get a mace that's like held in with a thing and like you walk up to it and the narrator's like hey looks like you probably shouldn't just up and grab this so i was like yeah i'll do that <laughs> um so then i did and then it turns the entire place into like a self-destruct mode thing so you have a certain <laughs> number of turns to get out or you die oh, so wow. i i with self-preservation uh it, abilities basically uh just kept misty stepping away nice. and misty like step. doing just between misty step and then i have this helm that gives me momentum in turn-based stuff so i get extra move speed the first three turns right i just booked it straight up booked it uh half of us got out alive and now i have this like uh, it's the uh, Light of Lathander, Blood of Lathander, or something like that. It's some crazy mace that like blinds undead and shoots <laughs> sunbeams. That's awesome. Uh, we sacrificed uh, a community to get it. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, there's so much that I haven't noticed. Uh, the 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 inn. Did you do the inn in the first act? The burning inn. The inn. The inn. Uh, I believe we went through and did everything with it, yes. I it, I didn't find that until my third playthrough of that game. I didn't even really? find it. I was just walking past it. But Phil was so crazed. Uh, the owlbear. You know the owlbear scene, right? We missed the owlbear club. I missed the owlbear club too the first yep. time. And Phil was like, how the fuck did you do that? He's on a main road. And like, sure enough, there's like... It's a very small percentage of a chance you can walk past that owl bug, bug, cup, but you can, and I did, and apparently you did too. It's hysterical yep. that you could just walk right past it. Yeah, it's it's a it's interesting. It's an interesting game, but yeah, there's other stuff I want to go back to too. Like I still haven't finished Dave the Diver. I kind of want to go back to that. Um, I want to go back to Baldur's Gate three, honestly. As much as you know, we've talked about it. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, well, we've talked about this for a while. Do you want to move to the news? Sure. All right, guys. Well, what are you guys playing? What are you guys enjoying right now? What's uh, tickling your fancy? I mean, I know Jason's going to say Sea of Thieves and more power to him. Uh, but what else are you guys playing? What are you guys enjoying? Um, and, yeah, we're going to take a quick break. Then Neil's got some news stories for us, and we'll wrap this thing up. Horrible Gaming Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to our final segment, the news. Neil collects news stories, headlines that don't necessarily deserve a talking point. We riff on them here. We talk about them. We let you guys know about them. We give our feelings about them. Neil, what you got for us? Uh, I got a couple uh, doofy ones, uh, basically. Yay! Doofy ones make me happy. 
Uh, the only the only one that may uh, kind of upset folks, I'll just start with. Um, so, have you heard about the uh, seven dollar quest in Starfield? No, I have not. So, I've heard one some of the... shit about Starfield, like them fucking monetizing so... mods, which is ridiculous. Yeah, uh, so there is a Tracker's Alliance quest, basically. It was uh, one of the, like, big things that they kind oh, of announced at their I game show. Then. Yeah. So it's it's a quest that it, it's, it's like a free demo quest. So apparently uh, this, this quest features the ability to track down wanted criminals across the galaxy. You can track down the first guy for free. But then when you try to track down the second guy, you get hit with a paywall. Mm -hmm. $7 for the quest line. Yeah. Uh, Todd Howard said, yeah, maybe that wasn't the best idea after the fact. Uh, these are the horse armor people, folks. Yep. <laughs> yeah, definitely the horse armor people. And like I said, it's the Wild West. These companies are always testing the waters on what's going to be okay if you don't react poorly to things then they mm. will do them to you. Like, if this had not garnered as much hate as it got, uh, every second quest for everything would be a paywall from that point on. Like, Yeah, it'd be a free-to-play game where you only pay for the quests that you complete. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, they also are, like, monetizing their creation suite, if I recall correctly, which includes yeah. Skyrim, which is mm, bullshit. So you're already asking people who keep your games alive through the modding community. I mean, without a doubt, uh, Skyrim is still alive. I think we can all agree because of its modding community. I'm not saying it wasn't a great base game. I'm not saying the DLCs for it weren't great. But let's face it, the last anniversary collection they did was a series of mods that they collected from the creation suite and tacked onto it. The mm -hmm. modding community keeps those games alive. What? My fault. Losing its mind right now. The the modding community <laughs> keeps those games alive. Without the modding community, uh, th there would be no Skyrim. There would be no Skyrim. There would be certainly no fucking Starfield. So, like, to then make those people who are going to put hard work in to keep your game alive for free, make them spend money to you is bullshit absolute bullshit mm -hmm. i mean these mods that they already put out they don't ask for money in return so, i mean sometimes they do but they do from us like to make them spend money on the thing that keeps your game alive is just ridiculous yeah 100 percent ridiculous especially when there is an entire suite of free mods uh, that can do so many other things, yep. either comparable or better in some cases than what right. the paid ones cost. Yes. Um, so from there, uh, FromSoft uh, had a little bit of goings on with FromSoft. Uh, this is actually a little bit of a twofer. Uh, the first one is uh, they finally uh, they finally caved and gave in to uh, some of the players. The uh, Get Gooders, who are big fans of all of these FromSoft games, say that the Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC is too hard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I I think that that's hilarious, honestly. Um, just just the sheer irony. So, as a result, FromSoft is going to be releasing or has released already uh, a patch that kind of balances things out a little bit more in the players' f uh, favor. Um. But I hope they got that out there pretty quick because uh, the parent company of uh, FromSoft and uh, its um, Bandai Namco, I forget what the name of the company was. I didn't write it down in here. Uh, they're actually uh, got a ransomware hack, and there's, I believe it's 1.5 terabytes of data that is set to be released if they don't pay up. No. Um, so that's the new thing here, guys, uh, is the ransomware. So that's not I'm really sure new. it's... They've, yeah, been doing the, they've been doing this for years. They've been, they've been doing it for years, but it's just that there's something waiting in the wings. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was they had until July 1st. So uh, as of us recording this, it hasn't gone out yet, but it may very well be have, have gone out on the internet uh, by the time this 
episode that we're recording is uh, out and about, which sucks because there's a lot of cool stuff with these ransomware attacks and these massive data dumps. You know, they reveal to people about, you know, games that either were, were in development or are in development. Mm-hmm. And then the companies kind of have to like, well, you know, we were waiting, you know, a surprise, but I guess here you go. And they confirm uh, existence of things. That's uh, the most recent one was Insom- uh, Insomniac, I believe, had it was they leaked there was a venom game that was in development a spider-verse game and then a little bit uh i guess it was a playable build of the wolverine game so i think that uh this is this is shitty you know we've talked about it on this uh show before how i feel like talking about a game too early is detrimental to the game detrimental to what it is and in a lot of times uh very deceptive practice Uh, But it really sucks when you're not doing anything deceptive and somebody else does something deceptive to you and releases it. Because, you know, when people find out whatever the games are that they have in there, like, could you imagine this ransomware releases to the internet and we find out that there's a Bloodborne 2 coming? Like, right. Uh, but it's but it's way far away. You can't cancel that now. You can't walk away from that project. Right. And. For sure, it has to be brilliant because now not only are they already building it up in their heads, but they're going to have even more time to build it up in their heads before you're able to say anything to them about it. It just sucks. It just sucks. Um, It's a shitty practice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So last one. Always like to try to end on a, a fun, goofy one. And this was the one that I was actually talking to you a little bit here uh, between uh, the recording chunks. So there is a, a PC gaming way, website, uh, PC Games N. Uh, I guess they went through and did a calculation of all of the purchases made of Steam games that have zero play time on. Uh, this is based off of a couple different things that are available to be found uh, within, like you know, average play times and stuff like that, based off of the assumptions of the sales and uh, all that and the like. It is assumed that there is approximately $19 billion in Steam games that have been purchased and never played once. Uh, so, you know, uh, we were just kind of talking about because the Steam, the summer sale is going on right now, and I've been addicted to checking it almost like daily just to see what I can see and find something new. It's not like they add new stuff. It's just right. me looking again to see if something catches my eye. Um because I have a ton of Steam games uh, now, or I, less than other people for sure, that I've purchased because they're on sale right. for no other, no other reason than them being on. In fact, just recently when we got back on here real quick, I remembered at work today uh, I had a brief second and I bought Sonic Mania again because, you know, <laughs> I got to have it in two places. But it was $5. Right. So what do I care? Because in my dumb reptile mind, I'm thinking, hey, someday, one day, I'm going to get myself some sort of handheld gaming PC that I'll be able to put Steam on and play it then. So I'm just buying games for a console that's later, and that's why I'm the problem. Yeah, no, I understand, man. (laughs) I'm the same way. Like, it's hard to say no to those fucking games. Um, It's hard to say no to those sales, too. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think I'm a little bit more restrained than that, but... There is not a day that goes by that I don't like go onto the homepage, go through the sales, and go, ah, I could buy that, you know? And like, mm. it is very dangerous. Very dangerous beast is the steel, is the steam constant saves, you know? Oh, yeah. Or constant sales, I mean. Uh, oh, it, yeah. It's a da- dangerous beast. Dangerous beast. Um, but yeah. Uh, all right, well, that's it then, right? Yes, sir. That is it. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break and we'll wrap this thing up. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the show and the shameless self-promotion that comes with it. Neil, what would you like to plug, sir? Uh, we don't have a whole heck of a lot going on currently. I know we are trying to get something figured out here at some point with yes. a return of a stream situation. I yeah. think uh, we were, if I remember correctly, we were shooting for next week. 
yes. on that because of people's schedules and how yeah. things are lined up. So we'll figure out something, question mark, uh, and then maybe possibly play something if it works. <laughs> hopefully. I, hopefully. I would really like to. Well, we have back um, options this time because we, we went through an uh, emergency installed Pal World just in case. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, which, I think I think Pal World might be one that we could play for a while. Uh, we'd have to see. Um, yeah, I'm down. I'm down for all of that and trying that and everything. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, so, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we've got a few things. Uh, please buy our t-shirts. They are up. On wizardsrespite.com, uh, very proud of them. Quantity, not quality, T-shirts. Um, in addition to that, uh, I just started doing on the TTRPG side with Stella uh, a uh, bite-sized games. We play role-playing game. We've been playing a weird little role-playing game together, um, and I'm cutting the sessions into like 20 to 15 minute. Our 15 to 20 minute sections. Uh, the first one went up Saturday where we're just kind of creating the world. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Check that out if you're up for it. Uh, as far as video games go, we've got all the same things. I'm still doing my streams. I'm also still doing the Stella stream. Uh, the next one will be live today. Uh, and we'll, I think we're playing Slime Rancher again. We're both very into Slime Rancher. So, uh, other than that, you can check us out on Facebook at OmegaMDH on Twitter. At Old Man Gaming Nine, you can join our Discord links in the description below and influence us in all of our shows from there. And as long as you guys keep watching and listening, we'll keep making them. We will endeavor to see you guys next week. Oh, we gotta wrap this up because I gotta poep. Uh, go oh, in that's the rough. Three, two. Well, that's what happens when you get high and you eat an entire pizza after you eat chili. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Mistakes were Your made today. This is gonna be ripped. Mistakes were made today. Mistakes. Well, we didn't eat anything <laughs> for breakfast. And it was just too late by the time we got around to thinking about it. And then, and uh -oh. I had I had chili on, so we were like, let's just eat the chili early. So we ate the chili at like two, like just a bowl. And then the high kicked in, and I was like, I need a pizza. Like I need one. <laughs> Like, uh, we have to get one. And then we got pizza. I was like, this was all sorts of mistake. Yeah, uh, I, I, I made the same mistake because yesterday I relied on my... I, a little collection of frozen foods at work just in case I don't bring food, which I didn't bring food <laughs> yesterday. So I finished my frozen burritos yesterday. <laughs> and then this morning... Uh, oh, well, last night for dinner, I had scallops, just scallops, nothing else, because I was left home alone while Kayla was at book club, and that's what I demanded my dinner to be with scallops. Oh. I had Pop-Tarts this morning and oh. a single hot dog bun for lunch, that <laughs> because is, that's all that was in the fridge at work. That is a hot dog. Yes, and then we got Condado tacos Oof. for dinner. So tomorrow that's, is going to be bad times. That's bad times. They need to take that day off, I think. Uh, all I'm right. off tomorrow. I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> there you go. There you go.